Hey everybody, it's OK Fixer. Awful cold outside and windy. Ah, ooh, got the fire going in here. Nice. And um, we're going to... What? This car? No, you're kidding me. <laughs> All right. Last thing I did is rebuilt that generator. Uh, and now we have to put the power egg together and uh, put it in the car. Uh, I sent the original carburetor off today. Once I get the engine in the car and I can, you know, not move it around any, I'll pull the distributor out and I'll send it to Bill at Sparkworks and have him whip it out. I'm pretty sure Bill will have that done in about a week or two. The carburetor will take a little bit more time, usually does. So, uh, let's get this where I can work on it because I can't work on it there. I'm, oh, I have to put the clutch on it and I've got another gland nut for it too, a new gland nut. So I'm going to have to put a gland nut on it, um, the clutch and the, and the fan shroud and then we'll put it in the car. Oh my god, my transmission's leaking. Well, no, not really. See what happened is if you get your transmission and you fill it up with oil and you wiggle it around like this, it's got a vent. And if you turn it over on the side accidentally with it full of oil like I did, it'll get in that vent and it'll want to drain out. So, when you do a transmission, put yourself a piece of cardboard underneath there. You can put yourself a fresh piece of cardboard underneath there after it drips. See if it's dripping anymore. But uh, catch all the oil. These two clutch discs are from two different clutch sets. Uh, this is from the set that I bought for the new transmission, new style transmission. This is the clutch that came out of the old transmission. But this one is absolutely new and this one slightly wore. So, the, they have the same part numbers, the discs do, as long as they're 200 millimeter discs. They're, they're the same, but they do look different. Uh, this one has some springs in it uh, that makes it a little cushier so that when it turns it gives it a little cushion uh, and this one is, is solid so it's going to snap a little bit more uh, jack-in-the-box style as I talked before. So I'm going to use this new clutch disc and uh, I always thought <laughs> That was the slickest tool, you know, a pilot tool. I thought that was just, the first time I ever seen one of those, I was like, what's that? You know, and I've put 10 clutches in already. <laughs> yeah, I already had my wife sit over there while I was, yeah. F&S, uh, Fitchlin Sack. Uh, essentially, you can't buy uh, Fitchell and Sachs uh, parts anymore. You can only buy Sachs. I guess Fitchell died. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he was sold out. Uh, I cleaned this up pretty good. And uh, I'm going to use this. Uh, it's an original mousetrap design. You can't buy these anymore uh, new. So um, that's telling me it's the best part. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for those that don't know, the clutch alignment tool, you put it in there and then you can move your, you move your disc around. Actually, I'm right on the money. But your, your disc can be off. See, and you, what you do is you just, you, you have the pressure plate loose, you have the bolts in it, and then you just kind of move it where it's kind of in the center. It goes into your pilot bearing, you know it's all the way in there. So you can just leave it there until you get these tightened up. And then... Uh, 18 on the bolts. It's either 18 or 14. Have to get in the book and look. I think it's 18. I have lined up my thermostat rod in between the second and third uh, push rod tube. There's a little hole in the head with a little piece of tin. It goes down in there. Anyways, I was looking at something here. I couldn't figure it out quite. But right here, there's a gap back here and I'll shine my flashlight so you can see it see the gap 
it's quite a gap too. It's about three quarters of an inch and probably two inches long. Let a lot of a uh, lot of hot air up in there. And I says, God, there must be something wrong with this tin. Got to be something wrong with this tin. <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. There's nothing wrong with that tin because the transmission, when it bolts up there, covers that up. Isn't that slick? Yeah, Germans. If you ever go to do this and you're working on car stands like this, it's going to put your engine at kind of a wacky angle with the, uh, with the, uh, oh, the, whatever, the head of the jack on your oil deal. So I have a little block underneath there and it, and it makes it so you can kind of rock it a little bit. And then I have a, of course the engines are neutral and I, you can turn this a little bit and the splines will hook up and you'll be able to push it forward. The first one I get in is the bolt over there, uh, the starter bolt. Uh, I do it without the washer, the washer's right there. And then um, I work on this one over here and uh, once I get that engine drawn up, uh, on on this side, then I can put the washer on. I leave them loose, and then I can hook my rubber on. So that's that's how I do it. Off to Sparkworks. Well, I've got as about as far as I can with the engine. Uh, without having, I just left this loose, uh, carburetor loose, uh, without having the carburetor or the distributor. If I get the distributor, I'll tighten this up and put the whole thing in the backyard, I guess. Uh, but uh, it's as far as I can get right now without having the distributor. I don't want to put any hoses on or whatnot like that until I do get the distributor. And in um, and, and that way, I'm not, you know, monkeying with them, busting them and stuff like that. Um, I got under the transmission again the other day and I still had a leak and uh, couldn't figure out what's going on so I got up there with a flashlight. I thought it was the vent because I had rolled the transmission then rolled it back up. But it turned out to be my brake light switch. Now I, I don't think that I damaged it installing the car, installing it in the car, the transmission, nor do I think I don't know, it might have been damaged in in um, in shipping. Uh, but if you look at this, if you look at this, the top is broke off of it, and you can see the you can see the pin move. And so, of course, the oil seeps through this pin here uh, and out. So I was losing you know transmission fluid or differential fluid, ninety weight. Uh, so uh, he's sending me another. In the meantime, I just used the old one off the uh, off the old box and cleaned everything all up. You can see my connection right there, and it's absolutely dry now. Uh, I lost about a half pint, so I put about a half pint in it also. Well, uh, while I am up on these uh, stands, um, I have access to underneath here, and I have not did any grinding on my welds which are starting to rust. So I need to fix that and there's a spot on either side where there is a piece of metal that fits underneath the pan and I cut both of those in order so I could have some flex in the pans mostly up, mostly upwards and I will need to weld uh, a piece on either side before I start grinding and sanding. So we'll do that. Grind, sand, and paint today. I don't know if I'll include you in this. Maybe I'll just show you the uh, the results because it's awful boring. Okay, and now for something completely different. Um, I, I was going to go shoot tomorrow, and I was going to shoot this. That's a black powder rifle. Uh, but uh, I can't get the, I want to clean, it's got, it's, I threw it underneath the workbench there, wrapped in a damp towel and, and, and it rusted for some reason. Uh, and uh, so uh, I've got, the, here, I'm, I'm going to show you the ramrod, here you go, yeah, that's how long it is. No. 
the ramrod, I'm going to measure the ramrod. Okay, it should go all the way in or a little bit more if there's nothing in the, in it. And had I left something in it, I would have fretted about it, I think. But you always want to check that. Yeah. So we're really good. Pull the ramrod back out so when it does go off, it doesn't shoot the ramrod clean through the garage door or through the garage wall. And uh, we're going to put a little heat on that. And I made my own wrench out of a quarter inch socket, but I can't put too much on it. Ah, because it will, uh, it'll trowel faz on me. So let's, uh, let's, let, let's put some heat on that and then, uh, and we'll try to get that nipple out of there. <laughs> he said nipple. The thing about black powder rifles is they're, in, they're incredibly corrosive. And so, I hope she don't go kaboom. Probably shouldn't. They're incredibly corrosive, black powder is. And uh, man, you really got to clean your gun really good. And I think the last time it wouldn't fire, and I had to improv improvise a, a, a nipple cleaner. Something I could poke up in there. Get fouled up pretty quick. And I'm opposed to putting acetylene on it, a uh, torch, because uh, I don't want to get it so hot that it takes the you know, takes the temper out of the barrel or something. Okay, that ought to do it. Let's see if she'll come out now. Ah, let's see here. Let's see if she'll come out of there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's coming out. Okay. This gun originally had a musket, or had a, a regular nipple, and I screwed a musket nipple in it because it has a bigger orifice. I like the inline guns because they go off all the time. The side by side things are a pain in the butt. Okay, we're going to let that cool down because I, I think probably it's warm. Okay, while that's cooling down, uh, I'll show you some stuff here. Um, this is uh, this is just some range. Uh, this is some, some rounds that come from the range, and you can just go down range, and the whole ground is is scattered with these right here. And uh, like that is completely lead right there. This one has a jacket over it, so uh, you can melt it all down. And here's a when you know you go shoot, you save your box and get some duct tape and go down. Get yourself a pound or two of that. And uh, the, the, when I go to the gun range, I belong to this club, <coughs> but it's full of rules and regulations that don't make any sense at all. You could receive 30% off your pub visit. And all these tokens are redeemable against the buy one, get one burger free token. Oh yeah, I think I can smell shite. So I generally go to the gun range on off days and on the week days. Like, uh, good days for me is uh, Tuesday and, and Thursday. Uh, I belong to this club, but I, I just, I am completely under the radar when I go there because I, I <laughs> see before, okay? <clears throat> when you're in a club like that, uh, it, it is, it is, uh, it is uh, chock full of, uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, so you get yourself uh, some of that. And uh, and you can uh, you know some of that you know, and uh, you melt it down. Huh? Thought I had it. Wonder what happened to it. Huh. Oh, here's a here's an ingot that I processed about a month ago. <laughs> it wait <laughs> better not. That's why I didn't put. It on there it weighs about 20 pounds and like, like something that 
concentrated on thin metal like that. That's why I put that over there. Uh, but you can uh, get yourself a uh, you know a little a little scoop and uh, a ball mold, and uh, you can produce the little 50 caliber balls. Okay, and now this is a rifle that's smooth right there, but when you jam it down the barrel, it's twisted. So it is rifled. It is rifled. And uh, it's pretty accurate. And it's fun to shoot because you have to build the bullet. You know, and so you have a box. And, uh, and yes, Sonny, uh, this was your mother's uh, little fishing box when she was young. So, yeah, I'm just kind of, I kind of went absconded with it. <clears throat> And you can adjust your powder load to whatever you want, and uh, it you know they have all kinds of tools like the little ball pusher and uh, you know and and patches and grease and and it's it's just cool you know Ex especially if you're teaching youth uh, because they learn how to build a bullet and they learn how everything works and uh, when they have one of these guns. It's the, the ammunition. You, you set a kid in front of a gun, and they, all they want to do is this, you know, and you go through the ammunition like, you know, poop through a goose. So one of these guns is really great for uh, teaching youth because it, it teaches them all the fundamentals, everything. And it's, uh, it's not expensive. It really isn't. Uh, let's go get back to our barrel and uh, we'll clean that up and I think our nipple is cooled off. Let's see if we can see through that. It's like an orifice. Nope, it's plugged up. It would not have fired. There it is. There we go. I got it cleaned out now. Uh, I need to find something that will go through that so I can, once I get it screwed in there, I can poke it in and out. I think that's a thing I had last time and I was trying to use a... I was thinking that was the hole, so I was using this cotter key here to poke poke through it. Okay, I'm going to see, see if I can't find something smaller, some wire or something, and I'll put it in my box along with this tool I made out of a quarter inch socket. I just buzzed the sides so it could... I'm sure there's a, I'm sure there's a, a wrench for this. It's just it just has two sides on it, so Look <laughs> the rust come out of her. Oh it looks like it's copper. <laughs> ah yes. I don't think I've ever cleaned this. And so after I run that uh brass deal in and out of it a little bit, I've got a deal on the end of my ramrod here uh, it's a little uh, buff thing here and I'm gonna put put it in some oil and run that in and out of the barrel and oil up the breech and I'll put it all back together okie dokie <clears throat> I got it all together and uh, she's working proper it's always been a little stiff like that but uh, greased up really nice and uh, most of the rust cut off and and she's in prime order again now. Okay, here's the drill. Um, is we'll take we'll take our powder, and we'll take uh, this measurer, and I'll go about 070 on that, I guess. Uh, I was using pellets, and I think they're 50 a piece, 50 grain a piece, and you can use one, and it'll it'll shoot. And uh, so this is 70 is about one and a half. Uh, or you can use you can use up to three, which is about 120 grains of black powder. Uh, but that's quite a kick, and it's a waste of powder if you're just shooting targets. If you want it to ball to go a long ways, then you want uh, you know 80, 100 grains, something like that. Uh, black powder is completely different than modern smokeless powder. Okay, it's it's. Uh, if you put modern smokeless powder from what was in a bullet uh, in that amount in this gun and lit her off, she'd explode. Uh, I mean, the barrel had split open. Uh, so there's there's a lot uh, there's a lot of difference between that, which is sulfur charcoal and uh, horse pee. You know, essentially it's what it is: uh, uh, ammonium nitrate. Uh, 
which you can get, you know, you can get a horse to pee on a flat rock and let it dry in the sun, scrape the stuff off and mix it with sulfur and some charcoal in the right proportions and you have black powder. All right, uh, so we're going to pour that down the barrel. Um, how is that going to pour down the barrel? Can't remember. I guess you just measure it out and you pour it down the barrel. Yeah, I think so. I think I remember. It's been a while since I shot this. And then um, there's two different uh, two different nipples. Uh, there's a percussion nipple and a musket nipple. And you can see why I want a musket nipple on the gun. I want the gun. I want to have fun with this gun. So uh, you know, I want it to fire every time. So I got it in line. It's not off to the side. It's not a flint lock. You know, I want to have fun with it. I want it to work. And uh, you have a a ball and an oiled patch, and that'll go down after that, the powder. And then uh, you use this to start it with because it's going to push down there hard and then get it going all the way down there. Then you use your ramrod to take her down and you measure your ramrod so you know how, how far it's going to go down and a certain amount of your ramrod is going to stick out. That way you don't have the charge way up here. You have it all the way down. And then you take a, 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 a musket cap and this little cap snappler, put it on there, drive the bolt home and she's ready to fire. Take her, red's dead, and uh, fire it. And, and click kaboom so uh, we're going to take this and another fun gun to take is the old single six the ruger single six uh, this gun uh, comes with a magnum cylinder or a 22 cylinder it's a uh, six shot and uh, and single action lots of fun yeah lots of fun these two guns right here uh <laughs> would serve any need you had and a shotgun <laughs> Uh, you know, whatever, uh, hunting, uh, protecting your home, whatever, shooting with your kids. Yeah, you, you could do it all with, if you added a shotgun to this, you could do it all. So I like these two guns. They're very economical and they're very economical on bullets and they're great teachers for youth. So there you go. All right, let's go out and shoot these. I'll show you how to build a bullet. First thing you want to do is get yourself some powder. It doesn't matter. Well, it does matter how much. I'm going to shoot about about 70 grain. Then you take your powder, you put it somewhere else. Bolt is open, safety is on. We're going to dump that powder down the barrel. Then we're going to take a ball and a greased patch or oiled patch, just like that. We're going to put that ball in that patch. I'm going to put it right in the barrel, just like that. And what that does is it snugs everything up. We're going to use our ball starter. And you'd think, why that's too much. No, it's not, it's not too hard. You think you're going to blow the barrel up, but it's not. The ball starter is very handy. Then you use your ramrod and ram her down. Tap it down all the way with the ball starter. Make sure you got it all the way down. You're going to want to pull your ramrod out so you don't shoot your ramrod out of the barrel. Take yourself a cap. Cover your caps up. Keep them from going off. I use this little cap snappler so I don't have to fidget around with it. Put your cap on your nipple, pull that off, put the bolt home, and you're ready to fire. Red's dead. Now remember, uh, during the Civil War, 
they could do this three times a minute accurately. Woof. There you go. Here. Yep. Pretty accurate too. I mean for what it is. I'll go get my gloves. Yeah. Okay, we're out here uh, in uh, part of the range. Uh, why the hell would anybody shoot a hole through the seat that you got to sit in? Tell you people. So the water will drain through. I, oh, that's why. The, that's why the water. It's the water. The water has to drain through, and that's important. Okay, here's a here's another gun that's really fun to shoot, and uh, it's very cheap to shoot because it it runs on on uh, the 22 ammunition and uh, it has a uh, what's neat about this gun is it has a cylinder that you can remove this is a single six and the, the single six comes in a bunch of different flavors uh, all the way up into 44 or 45 uh, but this is a 22 and uh, they call it a single six because it's single action. You know, you have it's not double action. You can't pull a trigger and and it and it uh, and it shoots single action because you have to. And I'm not going to drop the hammer because it's a it's a it's a it's a rim fire, and you don't want to do that on a rim fire because it'll. Yeah. Anyways, well, I'll tell you why it won't, you don't want to do it on a rim fire. It's because your uh, your firing pin will will pound against the side of the uh, of the uh, steel there and that's hardened steel on your on your firing pin it's very bad um, and eventually you will chip away at this cylinder where your rounds won't go in there very easy so you don't want to do that but you can a center fire a center fire gun you can you can you can sit there and dry fire it all day long won't hurt it This came with a with a magnum cylinder, so you could run magnum rounds through it also. And this is just 22 long rifle. Rotate the cylinder. What's nice about this is, especially with youth, you want to pull the trigger as fast as they can, and they can't with this. Uh, they have to. They only have six shots, and they have to make aim and all that other good stuff. Time. Keep the business in down. They have to make aim and pull a, pull the hammer back and squeeze every time. They can't just sit there and blow through ammo. Now, let's see, take these off so I can see. Let's see if I can hit something down there. Hi. I don't know where that went. Okay, can I hit anything? Nope. So, <laughs> I might go down and try a little bit bigger target. I think I'll do that. We'll see if we can hit that gong down there. So, to unload her, got a little unloading deal, a little rod. You have to push. Four, five, and six. Now, when I was a child, my father had. Uh, a Ruger Bearcat, which is quite a bit like that, smaller, and it had a, a bear and a mountain lion engraved on the cylinder, and we would shoot that also as a youth. So let's go down here to the gong and see what I can hit. I only heard one. Yeah, I heard it once. Well, let's see if uh, let's see if we can hit that black target right there, that that black ring or that black. Right there. Let's see if we can hit that. Nope. I think I hit it then. I hit it then. Again. Again. Let's see if we can drop one of those. I hit that plate, but I'm not. Okay, we're out. Six. See that's the that's the that's the loveliness of this gun, is it'll only shoot six rounds. Then you got okay. Let's try her once more. Oh, 
to the left. Hit her that time. Twice. Three times. Four times. Five. And I think that's it. Okay. There's a couple offerings for you. The single six and the black powder rifle. Very cheap to own, very cheap to operate. In trying times, uh, when it's hard to get ammunition, uh, these are, are great alternatives. You add a shotgun to that, and that's all you would ever need for just about anything you could do. Home defense, shooting, fun, uh, personal protection. Yeah, there you go. All right, back to the Volkswagen. What a giant, nasty, can't get them off. I can't get them off. I can't get it off. Oh, there it goes off. What a mess. Uh, painted the bottom side of the, of the car. Uh, I, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to crawl down there. It's all drippy and, and uh, I'm all painty and, Oh, yuck, what a mess. But it's done. I'll show you when it dries. All right, back to the car. I've made a couple of uh, tubes out of copper. And they're going to hold the cables. Let's see if I can't make this work with one hand. They're going to hold the cables. Well, that's wrong because I got it. The flared end, I put it on a little flare, is going to go fit up against there. Come on. There you go. And what I'll do is uh, give that a little, give that a little bend so it's sticking up so I can get to the, the, uh, deal right there. Um, connect it to the little deal that, little flapper. There you go. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, let's see, which one is this? This is going to be right and that's going to be front. So I made a couple of uh, kick panels out of, now I have original kick panels, but I made them out of wood. <clears throat> and the reason why is because I had to relocate the holes. This is this is all part of that change one thing in this car and the transmission won't shift. You know, you, you know, you, you put the wrong screw in that holds the, uh, the yeah, and, and, and you can't hook it in fourth gear now. <laughs> so, uh, essentially when I put these heater channels in, I put them... I put them like this and I, I didn't I, I afforded front and back and side by side but I didn't afford how the kick went and evidently they're kicked slightly they're not flat it, it's kind of weird they're kicked slightly just a little bit either that or they're made wrong because when I went to go put these together uh, it would not fit unless I had it higher and it was about this far higher than the hole was so I made my own. Now the kick panels fit underneath there like that and they'll, they'll work pretty good. They'll work just fine and uh, I'll cover them with some vinyl but I want to get a measurement down there. Now I'm not going to use this battery I'm going to use a slightly smaller battery but I wanted to get a measurement as to where I was going to glue my yes I did say glue my Okay, so so we're good there. We're good right there. So I can mark this as to where I want to glue it. You know, I'll, I'll bend it down and I'll glue it down there so the thing's sticking up. Uh, let me do that on both of these. And then um, we'll start working on... This one is going to get uh, a shut off for the electrical again. Uh, just like we did on the 67. So I'm going to have another hole in it, and I'm going to need, I'll have to mark that, and then um, just get some vinyl on them also. So uh, I kind of got them glued down there, um, 
got a jack on one and a on the other hitch on the other it's fine I'm using a little of that uh, I knit you snot ladies and gentlemen uh, just heard on the news that Oklahoma's uh, COVID count is down for the first time in many months funny hmm it coincides with two days after hmm Hmm, Joe Ben Biden gets immaculated. Huh. So I labeled these because I'm that kind of guy. Um, but once we uh, cut that in there like that, uh, we'll know it's the right side. Um, now, one thing you want to think about is, and I already did, is how you want that. Uh, uh, will the will the key uh, clear everything? Yeah. Will it clear the carpet in the corner? Yeah. It won't hang up? No. You got enough room to uh, put your, you know, your cables on? Eh, probably not. I'm probably, it's going to be like that's only going to be sticking through. And it's going to be way down in there. Probably, probably I'm going to make it longer. Probably at least another half inch-ish. And, and when I cover it with, uh, yeah, this will fit on there, and, and you, won't, you won't see that I made it a little bit bigger, but I'll still be able to screw it into there, and she'll be fine. And then that way, on the back side, I'll have more room to access the, yeah, that's a good idea. We'll do that. thing about using a dead man's tools that's uh, eerie, especially when you find, like, a receipt from the home despot, and it dates it. Anyways, thanks Uncle Daryl. I can even shift it back and forth if I need to. Uh, but uh, that should be fine and, and I'll uh, have enough room underneath there to, to easily, you know, uh, you know, this way and that way. So it should be fine. Um, let's see here. Geez, do you remember where I put that vinyl? Hmm. Oh, oh, I think I see it. I think I think I know. I think it's right. Maybe. Well, I'll have to go to Walmart. I only got room. I only got enough for one. This is that. Uh, uh, it's for for chalkboards, I think, or something like that. I got it in their uh, their crafts and arts in a roll. So well, let me get to Walmart and get another bag of that, a roll of that. I. Couldn't find what I was looking for, so I bought this. Seven bucks. It's uh, vinyl. It's shiny. It's not dull like the other. I'll have to tear this off there. So we'll tear that off there and we'll put the other on there. That'll be fun. So it matches. Okay. Um. Well, uh, uh, first day of uh, Biden's immaculation, we signed some executive orders. One of them was, and these you won't hear on uh, uh, the news, um, one of them was to take the permit from the Keystone Pipeline people. And uh, that laid off 11,000 people, so that's that's good. And then he took the permit from the construction company building the wall. Of course, you won't hear that on the news. So you got 11,000 truck drivers, steel workers. Well, that's just a Keystone Pipeline. You're not talking about the wall is probably even more. So you're probably looking double that. Maybe not that many. Maybe uh. Ooh. 12,000 something like that but you're not considering the uh, 
people who, uh, you know, sell clothes, hats, boots, uh, mosquito repellent, uh, sunscreen, uh, restaurants, waitresses. It just goes on and on and on like that. Uh, so there you go. There's your Democrats. That's, that's great. Those are perfect. How stupid, how ignorant can you be? But on the other hand, uh, uh, they did pass a law saying that you can uh, now, if you're a man, you can go uh, you can go use a women's restroom, or if you're a woman, uh, you can use a man's restroom, which is great. Um, I've been a, a closet lesbian uh, ever since I can remember. Uh, man, I just can't get enough of that. All right, I have those uh, outside cooking in the sun. Uh, in the meantime. Uh, this is, do you remember the engine that I bought way back in Nam? Uh, I paid, I don't know what I paid for, $150 for all those parts, the, the uh, engine. And the case is being machined right now. Uh, you would think by the same people who had my connecting rods. Uh, because he's had it uh, eight, eight months now. In fact, I called him and he said that, uh, that he's waiting on studs for something or other anyways I got this distributor and uh, uh, let's look in the book at that number and see where that what that what that went to hold on a second let me get a book you might look at that and you might say boy that distributor cap looks terrible <laughs> yeah yeah no, not really. That's uh, actually it's in pretty fair shape. And here's the deal: it's a German distributor cap. They're hard to find, so I'm gonna keep that. And the rotor looks about the same as as well. Uh, part numbers, part numbers, part numbers. I don't know if you can see that, but that's a 311 part number. That's for type three, but they had that in that in that uh, hmm. uh, three eleven two oh five uh three oh three eleven nine oh five two oh five G. Uh and you know uh, none of these numbers two oh five uh nine oh five two oh five M and P, but uh, you know three eleven that's a that's a type 3 distributor will it fit in that case yeah will it run the car yeah so <laughs> I'm just gonna put that at the back of my mind that's a type 3 distributor so it's it's probably meant for uh, you know dual carburetors it's not doesn't have uh, so so the, the you know the advance is going to be a little different that kind of thing uh, will it run this car so it'll get it out of the out of the driveway yeah sure why wouldn't it? But it's 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 kind of peculiar that people when they put put these engines together they just used whatever they wanted to. It's, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're gonna clean that up and put it in the car and see if she'll run. Probably will. Open, closed, open, closed. So the points are working. All right, this has a smaller shaft, this Type 3 distributor. This is my Type 1 distributor rotor. So I'm going to clean this cap and this rotor up, and I'm going to use this cap and this rotor with, with that. If you take a little bit of uh, emery cloth and you, you wad it up, you can get uh, get up in there. Uh, you you turn the drill to the way it it wraps and, and stuff it in there. And boy, she just cleans really nice. All right, I've got her in there. It's a tight fit uh, for the wire going. It's a small wire. I don't know. It's for type three, so the coil isn't there for type three. It's probably somewhere else. Uh, I, I left it loose so I could wildly gesticulate it. 
no, I timed it to zero. Um, we'll also see if, um, I don't mean to be so snarky, <laughs> see if the generator works too. I don't expect it to run very well. Well, it's charging. Shocking, it runs good. It runs pretty good for uh, you know, a quickie with a pet set of uh, a, you know point file. Good. Now I can move this thing around and I don't have to wait for uh, a carburetor or a distributor. Fabulous. And I have another distributor to run in a car if I need to. Great! Well, since I've got all that done, um, and I think I think we're okay, I'm, you know, I'm waiting for carburetor and distributor, so uh, we can put the fenders on, um, and I can also sand this mess too. So, yeah. So we'll do that, but I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to wrap this video up uh, so it's not so long. And uh, we're coming along. Uh, you know, one step forward and two steps back and then three steps forward, and one step back and four steps forward and no steps back. But, you know, we are progressing. We are progressing. Um, that's that's really shocking that that distributor runs the car so well. Uh, you know, it's good. It's, it's fabulous. A neat neat little cap. It's a little short cap with a small shaft, but it does have a 311 part number on it. So um, yeah, uh, I'm going to do the fenders next and the lights. And then uh, I can finish kind of sanding the car and clear it all. And uh, gee, I could even put hubcaps on it and that kind of stuff. And then I'm just waiting for for money and uh, and um, parts. And I could drive it. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks for wrenching with me. Thanks for being in my garage. Appreciate you guys. Uh, my, the support for my channel, even though I say it's for my grandchildren, I know you guys watch it. I appreciate it, and uh, uh, I'll see you on the next one. See you guys later.